say we're going to go with sternum first. That's the first one on your list. Um, typical projections we do um, is an RAO and a lateral sternum. Okay, so starting with the RAO. Number two, rotate the body to the RAO position. This is enough to remove the spine from the sternum. So it's a slight rotation, which is usually highlight 15 to 20 degrees. Don't worry so much about the midline for this one. Central ray, I do want you to know it is perpendicular to the IR at the mid sternal level, which is approximately midway between the manubrial notch and the xiphoid tip, which is about T centimeter. As far as respiration, you need to know breathing technique should be employed, which is 60 to 75 kbp, about three second exposure time, and a low MA station. What, why do we do that? Blur out the ribs. Yeah. It's just to blur out the rib markings because we use a low MA, a long exposure time. We just tell the patient to breathe. Why, why does it say use a look like a low KDP, 60 to 75? The sternum is thin. Yeah, because the sternum is so thin. So you do need a low KDP. That's why it was so hard to see with the guy. And I know you guys probably can't do something like this. this. Which is the level of what? T10. T10. What's the maneuverable um, or the sternal angle, the level of? T2. T4. T4, T5, good. And what's the notch? T2, T3. Yeah, T2, T3. T2, T3. So over here, to me, I really can't see the sternum that well. I can see the maneuverum here, and I can kind of see the body here, but to me, it just doesn't. So far away. There's chairs over here, you guys. I like standing. I feel bad uh -huh. that y'all are standing. All right. So that's that's the REO sternum. Let's move on. Okay. Lateral sternum. The first one is non-trauma position number one. So there's two way, ways you can do a lateral sternum. So an SID of 72 inches is recommended. Why? away from the image receptor to compensate for that large OID would increase the SID. Okay. okay, number one, place the patient in the seat of their standing left lateral position. For this one, position number one, you just put the arms behind the thorax and have the patient clasp their hands behind them. Number four of the midline, I do want you to know the midline of this one is about an inch posterior to the anterior chest wall. So just picture being uh, left lateral. So it's just saying about an inch, the chest wall is here. So you don't, don't look at the breast, look at the chest wall. So go, go about an inch posterior to the breast wall. Or the chest wall, sorry. Okay, center array again, same thing, you do need to know that. It is perpendicular to the IR between the maneuverable notch and the xiphoid tip. Okay, respiration for this, they want full inspiration. Okay, the only difference between the trump, the next one down, everything is exactly the same except you put the arms above the head. And I won't say which one's number one and which one's number two, just know that you can do it two different ways. Lateral trauma, and then we'll look at the two that I have hanging up here. Okay, so for the lateral trauma, this is when the patient is in the terminal position. The patient will be number one in the dorsal decubitus position. What does that mean, dorsal decubitus? Good, they're laying on their back, and you're going to use what kind of beam? Good, you're going to use a horizontal beam. Number four, the midline of this one is one inch inferior to the chest wall because they're laying down. If they're laying down, it's one inch inferior. Okay. Center ray is the same, mid sternum. Okay. 
This one's horrible. I can't see it. I'm sure you can. I can't see it. You can't either. This one's not that great either. Like I said, these, these are really, really thin bones and they're very hard to see um, as far as reading graphically. I can't see this, which is what? Good. Here's the sternal angle. That's where the manubrium reaches the body. I really, you can kind of see the xycoid tip just a little bit in this one. is for the upper ribs, okay, anterior upper ribs. Why, why do they recommend doing those PA versus AP? Anterior ribs. Yeah, put them closer to the IR if you're PA. All right. In the PA position, number two, place the midline of the grid along the mid-sagittal plane of the body. So the mid-sagittal plane would be what to the image receptor or grid? Perpendicular. Good. So the mid-sagittal plane is perpendicular. All right. Central ray is the same um, as the sternum. It's approximately T7. Okay, number three, I skipped it go back to number three. If you put the top of the image receptor, just like a PA chest, if you put the top of the image receptor about an inch and a half above the shoulders, you should be fine with your center ray. Okay, for upper ribs, number five, you need to know respiration is at full inspiration. And it says why. So this ensures that the diaphragm is near its lowest point. Don't worry about how many ribs you should see. AP for the same reason as PA for anterior. If it's a posterior injury, they say AP because it puts the posterior ribs closer to the image receptor. Okay, positioning is exactly the same. Put the top of the IR about an inch and a half above the shoulders, which will give your central ray perpendicular at about T7. That's the midline. Okay, with this one, the only the Full inspiration still, we're still on upper ribs. All right, so the one below it, AP projection for posterior ribs below the diaphragm. Number three, you put the IR, um, the lower edge of the IR approximately at the level of the iliac crest, and then you just center to the center, perpendicular beam. So if the lower edge is at the level of the iliac crest, you're gonna get as low as you can with your ribs. Same thing if the upper, when you're doing upper, just put the top of the image receptor about an inch and a half above the shoulder, then just center to the center. Okay, with the ribs below the diaphragm, no number five, respiration is at full expiration so that the diaphragm moves up. And don't worry about how many ribs you should see. Okay, so the first one here, these are, obviously these are upper ribs. See how we can't see the lower ribs? And the same kind of what, what they say as far as technique is concerned. Throughout all of these, we, we say try not to go over 60 to, I said 60 to 65, I believe, KDT, just to keep it in the lower range um, so you don't over penetrate. So here I can see rib one, it's the little short one here. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, rib eleven. So that's pretty good. In a lot of places, as you guys know, they just do a PA chest. They don't do rib technique. I'll show you the difference coming up. Okay, so this is this is for lower ribs. Um, we can see 12 here. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Pretty good here. Okay, oblique ribs. Okay, RPO and LPO. 
Number two, rotate the body 45 degrees to place the affected side of the body closest to the image receptor. like the um, AP upper and, and AP lower. If you're doing the upper ones, you put the, the top of the IR about an inch and a half above the shoulder, and then the center ray is perpendicular to the image receptor. If it's the lower ribs or below the diaphragm, place the lower edge of the IR at, at about the level of the iliac crest, and then your center ray is perpendicular to the center of the IR. Quality checks. As far as quality checks are concerned, I don't care that, about the difference between the, the above the diaphragm and below. Just know that with the RPO and LPO, it's the side down that's elongated. Okay, which is number one and number two, the last sentence on each of those. The side down, no matter if you're RPO or LPO, is elongated. Let's do the AOs. Next page. Everything's exactly the same as what I went over for the POs. The only difference is on your quality checks, number three, the side up is elongated. So it's exactly opposite. <coughs> okay, so here's some oblique ribs here. So let's start with this one. Which, which ribs are, this is, which ribs are elongated? Okay, good. So the right ribs are elongated. See how these are foreshortened here? So what position is this? It could be two different ones. R RPO or LAO. Good. That could either be an RPO or an LAO. I don't know which was done. You can't tell the difference because we always view an image like the patient is looking at you with the right side out of your left side. So. Who knows what position this was? I just know that the right ribs are elongated. So it's RPO or LEO. Okay. What about this one? The right ribs. Good, same thing. The right ribs are more elongated than the left, so this is an RPO or an LAO. What about this one? LPO, RAO. Good, this is either an LPO or an RAO. Always remember an x-ray, an RPO is an LAO, and an, LA, and an LPO is an RAO. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. It's the same look, right? It's just the mirror image. All right, All right. SC joints. Like I said with the lab um, last week, no one ever does SC joints, but I have to teach them because it's still on the registry stuff. All right, so first one, meaning it's the bilateral method, and you, we're gonna see both of them. Place the patient prone. Why do you think they, they say to put them prone? So it's closer to the IR. Puts them closer, puts the SC joints closer to the image receptor if they're prone, or PA. Center ray is perpendicular at the level of the SC joints. Easy enough. That's all I want you to know about that. The oblique projection, REO and LAO. So we rotate the body, REO and LAO. Number two, the affected side is adjacent to the <clears throat> image receptor. So if I did an REO, which side would be open? The right. The right. Okay, so the REO would open up the right SC joint, the LAO would open up the left SC joint. Because the beam has to run what through the joint space to open it up? Yeah. 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 On your test again. Right. Don't worry about the, the next one, central ray um, angulation method. That's just saying if you don't oblique the patient, you can angle the beam. About it, that's just confusing. I have a couple 
images to show you. And then we'll start lab. Then y'all are done. like this, radio paint with the little like hole in it, those are chest tubes. That's for drainage. So that's a chest tube there. What's all this? Yeah. Yeah. What do they call that? Pneumothorax. And they had a pneumothorax, right, but what do they call that when it goes up through here? Uh, the linkage? Yeah. Sub-Q air. Subcutaneous. If you guys ever felt that on a patient? Oh, oh you have to feel it. If, if someone is, it, it, it's the weirdest feel. It pops. It's just like bubbles. It doesn't hurt them. Feel it. <laughs> it's underneath their skin. So anytime, a lot of times if you have rib fractures and pneumos, then you get this subcute air coming up under here. This was a really bad trauma. This was an MVA. You said MVA? MVA, motor vehicle motor, okay. Yeah. This is the same patient. chest and this was a rib technique oh. so what's the difference between a portable chest and a rib technique the breathing technique no, no. kvp mm -hmm. what, what what's the recommended kvp for ribs 60 to 65 so what's the difference what does lower kvp give you Better what? Contrast. Contrast. Good. Okay, so low PVP, you get higher contrast. You get more black and white. Okay. So we see how you see blacks and whites? See how this is kind of grayed out? The higher the KVP, the more grays you get because of what? What's produced with higher KVP? More scatter. More scatter. Okay, anytime you have more scatter, you have more grays. Less scatter, lower KVP, high contrast, blacks and whites. That's really pretty. Like that. So, okay. if, if the portable went down to 66 KVP, then would it be pretty much the same image? Yep. Okay. Yep. If they used a regular, um, a higher mass and a lower KVP on the portable chest, then yes. Cool. But see how with the portable chest, you get more bronchial markings and you can see the heart better, which is what the chest x-ray is for. Okay. 